up to this point I've shown you how to go from a napkin sketch to ordering the board from the fab vendor in order to get that bare board back. In this last video in the series I'm going to walk you through what I need from you in order for me to order your board and get it assembled. So I'm going to show you the format that we should have I'm going to show you the format I would like your Gerber files in so that I can track each of the files that I'm going to be submitting to the fab shop. It's going to be in a special format. I want your last name first, underscore Gerber, so I know it's a Gerber file, the uh, name of the board and some date code, and this is going to be the zipped file. I'm going to show you how you could submit this through JLC PCB and have them do a preliminary design for manufacturing test. And if it passes this test, then I have confidence they're going to be able to build it and I'm willing to submit your Gerber and get the board placed. In addition, in the short term, we're going to have JLC PCB do the assembly of the surface mount parts for your board. And so we need to generate a few additional output files that I will submit to JLC PCB in order for them to assemble the surface mount components will get your board back and then there'll just be a few through hole components that we'll have to assemble manually whether you do it or I arrange to have it done we'll see when we get closer those two files that I'm in a need in order to get your board assembled will be generated first from the schematic page and that's the bill of materials and secondly from the layout page and that is the assembly output pick and place and I'm going to walk you through how to do this. Up to this point, we've created the Gerber files that we're going to send to the Fab Shop. Those have the Gerber outputs plus the NC drill file. We're going to take that output and we're going to put it into a zip file. Really important, I want you to change the name of that zip file and put your last name underscore Gerber. That tells me this is a Gerber file and who owns it. And then I want you to put some name related to the board itself, which whatever name is appropriate for you, and a date code so I know when it was created. And of course, .zip. This is the file that you're going to submit to JLC PCB to test for design for manufacturability. So let's go ahead and do that. For me personally, I like to put that zip file on my desktop so I know exactly where it is when I need to import it into JLC PCB. So I'm going to take a copy of this, I'm going to move it to my desktop. Next, we're going to go to jlcpcb.com. You should have already created a, an account and we can sign into that account. So you're going to sign into your account. Here is me. And uh, we're going to do a quote now. This is the same process that you went through before to uh, make sure that the price structure for your board was acceptable. Everything will be default and the next step is you're going to add your Gerber file. My Gerber file is on my desktop and it started with ELB and here it is. I'm going to upload it's going to process it. So this is your Gerber file that you're going to be uploading and checking. It'll bring it in. It'll read all the information, make sure that it meets all these criteria. First step is, yep, I can read the top surface and the bottom of the board, and it's two bucks. The next step is you're going to go ahead and save it to your cart. Now we're going to go through all the steps of purchasing it except for placing the order. And in this process, JLC PCB will do a DFM check. And so we're going to say, okay, we got the $2 price, that's great. Now we're going to say, check out securely. And now we're going to fill in a few pieces of information. Feel free to put whatever you want here. We're not going to place an order, so it's not that critical. I'm going to say, same as shipping address. I'm going to say, continue. And you'll see here, okay, the $2 for the for the boards, $17 for shipping is still 20 bucks. We'll use the DHL shipping. I'm going to say continue. And here is where we do the DFM. Before we do a pay directly, we're going to review before payment. And this is what you're going to do. You click this tab, we're going to submit order. We are not ordering the part, 
we're reviewing it before payment. It's loading and now you can see I've ordered a lot of boards in the past and they're in production they're doing well. Here is the board that we just uploaded. Here's the order number. Here is the file. Here it is the status reviewing. When this board has passed DFM and says here file review will be completed in 10 to 60 minutes when during business hours when JLC PCB has finished reviewing your board and it's acceptable this is going to change and you're going to get an email saying hey your board passed ready to pay and then you would come back here and you could pay if you wanted to instead once you get that email back from JLC PCB saying your board is passed you know your Gerbers are acceptable they're gonna work JLC PCB is gonna accept that order and then you're gonna send me those Gerbers and in addition to the that Gerber zip file there's two other files you're gonna need to send me and let's go back to Altium Designer and I'm gonna show you how we export those two files there are two last files that we need to create that I'm going to need in order to submit your job to JLC PCB and have the board fabbed and the parts assembled to the board. In addition to the Gerber.zip file that I need, the other one, another one I need is the bill of materials. The way we get that is we open up the schematic document and here I'm actually using uh, the board file from EMEA. This is his practice board. We open up the schematic for the board and we go to reports, bill of materials. And it opens up a, a sheet for us to be able to uh, create and edit the bill of materials. And here you see all the components that are used. The description here, remember, it's the reference designator that is the unique file name for each component. That's the label it has in the database. And in addition, every part has a comment field that happens uh, to be listed here in one of the columns. There's the description of it. The unique ID for that component on the board, the reference designator. There's some footprint information. This is the library reference or the uh, design item ID number, the unique name for the part. Here's the quantity. There's one other column that's really important that we need in order to tell JLC PCB what LCSC part do each of these correspond to. And that is the LCSC part number. And so we need to add a column to this bill of materials. And so if we come over here to columns, you can see, well, here are, um, here are some features that we can use to adjust the columns. Now, you'll notice, gee, there are a couple of components that are grouped together. They happen to be the identical uh, reference designator. So that means that um, they happen to be the same library reference. So that means that they are the same part, just used in multiple locations. Um, and they're uh, grouped together over here under comment and footprint. So if we were to remove these, then we would have every individual part identified here. This way, we can tell at a glance, these two are identical. These happen to be identical. These are identical. And of course, these are um, uh, switches and uh, some test points. Always safer to keep these uh, unmarked so that we don't group parts together. We run the risk of having some parts that are not the same group together because maybe they have a common footprint or maybe they have a common uh, comment but they're not really the same parts. So let's keep them all unique individual um, items in the bill of materials. Now the one column that we're missing that's really important is the LCSC part number. And so we look under the possible columns to add. And we go through, da-da, 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 let's see. Looking for LCSC, oh, here it is. 
This is the LC part number. That's the one that we need. We need to add that column. And I'm just going to shorten these guys up a little bit so we make a little bit of room. And here it is. This is the information that I need in order to tell JLC what part in your inventory of parts are we going to use in building the board. Now, of course, there are some parts that don't have an LCSE part number because the power jack, for example, a through-hole part, this came from the manual library, doesn't have an LCSC part number. The switches and the test points, these are through-hole parts. They came from the manual library. They don't have LCSC parts. But all the others that are going to be assembled by JLC PCB have those numbers, and that's what I need in the bomb. So now that we're done, we're ready to export and we're given a couple of choices when we export. In particular, we can export different um, formats. We want an Excel format. We're going to export it into the project output. So we export it to the project output, and we're done. And now we say OK. The second file I need is the pick and place file. Each of the parts that are on the layout have a unique location and I need to tell the pick and place machine where that location is. So the last file, we come over here, we identify, okay, yep, here is the layout information. And we're going to, again, we're going to go to File, Assembly Outputs, and now we're going to generate the pick and place files. We click Generate Pick and Place. Here are all of those parts. Here are the reference designator. These are unique ID for each part that's going to go on the board. Here's information about it. And here is the information about the location for that part that Pick and Place is going to use. That's what we want to export. But really, really important. We need the CSV format. We don't want text. CSV only. Now we say OK. And again, it's going to be placed in the project output folder. Those are the three files that we need. And now the very last step is we need to change their file names. So it's important to go to the directory that has your project in it. This is how Altium organizes your project files. Find the folder that has project outputs. We open that up. Now, of course, you're going to see in there the Gerber files. We already have those. We don't need those. In addition to the Gerber files, look around for the two files that we created. Here is the pick and place in a CSV format. And I'm going to move a copy of that to the desktop because we're going to modify it. And let's see, we need the bill of materials. And you'll notice that there's another file here. That's the Excel file. It doesn't say bill of materials, but that's what it is. We're going to move that to our desktop as well. It's these two files in addition to the Gerber that we need. But what's really important is the file name. And so I want to change that in the same format that I chose for the Gerber. I need my name. In this case, I'm going to put my initials, underscore. What is this? This is the bill of materials. This is the practice board, the unique name. And I'm going to add a date code just to identify some information about when this was created. And I'm just going to use today's date. That is now the file that's going to go with the Gerber file in zip format that you're going to send to me. The last one is the pick and place. And same thing. I'm going to use uh, my name. This is pick and place. Do not use an and sign because that is not recognized by most computer systems. It's pick and place is the information in there. This is going to be the practice one board. And again, the date code 2021, 01, and 16. And we're done. So it's really these three files that you're going to send to me. The Gerber, the build materials, the pick and place. And remember, they have to have your last name first, what's in that file, and then some information about the board. It's the only way I can keep track of the dozens of files that I get that I have to upload to JLC PCB. And just as a double check, let's open up that bomb uh, file, 
And let's make sure, yep, here we are. This is the LCSC um, file uh, uh, part number, and this is the information that I'm going to give to JLC PCB. When you've got these three files, and you verify that the Gerber file is good, then you're going to send these. You're going to um, uh, you're going to upload these three files to Canvas, uh, and then um, uh, your TA is going to check them out. And if they look good, then they're going to pass them to me, and I'm going to upload these to JLC PCB. In general, if you have a board and you want us to, if you want me to order it, these are the three types of files that I'm going to require to order your board. If you don't have the file name structure, I have so many different files that I have to deal with. I can't afford to open up each one, see what's on the inside, who it belongs to. If you don't have the right file name structure, I'm just not going to have time to do anything with it. I'm going to send it back to you, just so you know. And that completes the design of your board. You get that to me. We're going to order it. You're going to get it back. We're going to do the final assembly of adding the power plug. We're going to add the uh, switches. And it's going to uh, be ready for you to uh, turn on and start the, the debug and uh, checkout process. And that concludes the entire soup to nuts process for designing building and submitting a functional circuit board. And we're going to use this process over and over again in this class and in all of your other projects.